Thank you, guys. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone for coming. I, I, I was talking to some of you. Uh, some of you guys got on the plane to be here. Uh, you guys drove all the way from Ithaca, and uh, you know, it's this stuff that makes the difference. You know, uh, I was definitely overwhelmed during the first uh, four sessions, all right, or the two speakers. And if you were to, like, my plan is when I go home, I'm going to watch all the slides. I'm definitely, I'm more used to Sensei Nick, but I'm going to watch all your slides, and I'm probably going to have, like, my top three to five questions, and I'm going to either try to get you on the phone or call you. So that's what I definitely recommend to you guys. Instead of just being overwhelmed and not knowing what to do next, get like the top three. And you know, I don't know, I don't know if John likes that, but I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll have that big smile when he talks to you guys. Uh, at least that's the impression that I get. Today's the first day I meet John too. Uh, so let me tell you guys a little bit about my story. Uh, I grew up in Rio de Janeiro. I started training when I was 15 years old, and I've never had a job that wasn't uh, either teaching martial arts or, I guess, doing martial arts or fighting as a professional fighter. And it's something that I'm proud of, and I wouldn't want it any other way. And the impression that I got from watching you guys, especially during the sales presentations, if we could just pay someone to do all that, and we could get on the mat and teach classes, I think that we all really appreciate it. The problem is that, that, that that's gonna come at a cost. Like, you don't wanna be, um, you don't wanna be a, a, like a hostage to your own, uh, weakness, you know, a hostage to your own way of not knowing how to do things, and that's kind of how I always approached my training. If I'm not comfortable on the bottom, I'm going to get the toughest guy on top, and I'm going to get him on top of me, and let me find my way out of the bottom, you know, in jujitsu. Maybe with you guys standing, maybe with someone that was really tall, and you kept getting hit with the jab over and over, and you didn't know how to do it. The more you run away from your weaknesses, the more they're going to haunt you, and, you know, that's why all of you guys, a lot of you guys drove from very far. I drove only 40 minutes, and I have a, I brought a couple of my guys as reinforcements, and uh, it's to figure it out. Like I'm, I'm really, you know, even though I've fought and you know, I've had a school, I'm really just like everyone in here. I'm trying to figure this thing out. Uh, maybe I saw it a little bit before some of you guys. Maybe not. And I think the reason why uh, Sensei Nick asked me to speak today is because I'll, I'm going to tell you guys how I see it, rather than from an expert point of view, like these two guys that were here earlier. And I'm just gonna tell you what has been working for us at my school, and I guess uh, we'll take it from there. So, guys, today I wanna talk about student engagement, just how to, how to spark that fire in the students, how to, how to get people to embrace uh, your vision of your martial arts. Now, I love jujitsu, you know, or when I use jujitsu, just think of martial arts. I love jujitsu, I could not see my life without it. Like, everything I have in my life, like the house that I bought, was not with UFC money. Like the house that I live in, I bought from, you know, teaching jujitsu to other people. You know, like everything that I've gotten in my life, I've got from martial arts practice, not from beating people up. And my son is named Henzo after my teacher, Henzo Gracie. You know, like martial arts is a big part of my life. And I hope that you guys have that passion too. And even if you're not quite there yet, I hope that you see it uh, when I'm speaking uh, to you today, Just sharing with you some of the lessons that I've learned. Um, so what really sparks interest in the students or someone who's gonna join your school, what I believe is just being remarkable, this whole concept of being remarkable. And today I'm gonna talk about three things. Like what is really to be remarkable? You can't really be remarkable, you just have to like do re remarkable things. Like I don't really believe in being a black belt, like you do black belt related activities, and if you stop doing it, I don't care what belt you wear, you're gonna be a white belt all over again. Like if you stop working out, and if you stop loving your martial arts and you, you know, all of a sudden you're gonna gain weight and you're gonna be like you were before you were, uh, started training more short. So we're gonna talk about the concept of being remarkable and then the four major activities that I have had to incorporate in my, uh, uh, my role as an instructor or head instructor of, a, of a, a big school. We have around 400 students. We're not the biggest jujitsu school in the world, but I think we're up there with some of the bigger ones. You know, like we only do jujitsu right now, we don't have any other programs. But you no, know, through uh, Sensei Nick's influence, we are gonna incorporate a kickboxing program, which is something that I'm very, very excited about. And yeah, we're just gonna uh, take a quick look on how I've moved from not really having a Facebook account uh, a year ago onto having a bunch of the videos and stuff like that. Is this thing not working? Here we go. All right, guys, so remarkable. It's worthy of being noticed or talked about as uncommon or extraordinary. Like, I think if you could just use that word to, to describe 
pretty much anything that you do, like I wouldn't want to use that word to describe myself. I, I don't even like to think of myself as a remarkable person, but I think I've had a chance to witness some of my students do remarkable things, and I've had a chance to participate in quite a lot of them. And you know, I've had some quite remarkable experiences in my life too. And 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 like all all the content that Sensei Nip was talking to you guys uh, before, whether it's a video, whether it's a blog post, or whether it's a Facebook post, or any the interaction you have uh, with a student. I think it's important that it is a remarkable one. Um, someone drives an hour or 15 minutes and they watch one of your classes, they come into your school, they are, you know, two eyes, two ears, just focused on you. It's a, a big chance to influence people in a positive way. I take that as a big responsibility and a big opportunity to, to, to make this world a little bit better. And that's really where everything that I do pretty much comes from. Uh, so let me tell you guys a little bit about some of the remarkable experiences that I've been involved with and, and why I, I consider it so important. I think first of all, because I've had a remarkable teacher. You know, like I named my son after my jiu-jitsu instructor, not because, um, oh, he's like a god or anything like that. I wanted my son to have a name that was meaningful. I wanted my son to have someone to look up to when maybe his relationship with me wasn't the best. And you know, I just kind of, I've seen uh, Master Hands of Gracie fight, like some of, take all comers, you know, like back in, uh, in, in the early days and always looking to the next challenge, but I've seen him take that approach off the mats too, and I think that's what I really want to focus on with you guys today. Like you see me here, some of you guys might have seen me fight, I'm sure most of you guys have seen me win some fights, uh, get choked out unconscious in others, get knocked out uh, on others, but to me, it's the experience, what I've learned from those situations is what matters. I feel that in a jiu-jitsu school or any martial arts school, it's not because you are the best that you get to speak, it's because you've made the most mistakes that you get to speak. Like the reason why we all sat down and we listened, I, I listened to uh, Sensei Nick and, and John for like four hours and I didn't even look at my watch. That's how amazing I thought those uh, presentations were. And it's not really because they know a lot more, they do know a lot more, but the only reason why they know more is because of all the times they've messed up. And I don't know how, how much they would admit to it, but I, I can guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just like Master Hands, one time, it was just a simple thing, like we went to, we went to Abu Dhabi and, and we went to compete, and this is in the desert, we were in there as an uh, invitation from the, from the royal family, and this is immediately after the tournament. I think I took second place that year. Master Hands lost in the first round, so I guess he had like that energy, like I lost, like I, I have to do something. And we go, we go check out the horses in the stable, like the desert uh, race horses. And they're showing us like all the stallions and these like million dollar horses, you know? And there was supposed to be a huge desert race. And then Hanzo goes like this, do you have a horse for me? And they look at him like, do you, like you're not just gonna race around the course. Like, you, know what you, you know what you're asking right now? He's like, yeah, I know exactly what you're asking. I'm gonna race in the desert. They're like, there's no way, the race is like six hours, you don't even know how, you haven't been trained, there's no way you could race the horse. Anyway, he finally convinced, Hanzo's a very good talker, even better storyteller, and he convinced the prince to lend him a horse so he could enter the horse race. <laughs> the race starts like right at uh, uh, sunup, and there's these loops that after each loop, they have to check the horse's heart rate. If the horse's heart rate won't come down, they take you off the race, because you know, you could run your, your horse uh, to death. So first loop, all like three of the prince's main horses get out of the race. Then second loop, another bunch of the horses get out of the race. By the third loop, Master Hansel and his ho horse were the only competitor left from like <laughs> Sheikh Tahnun who created the Abu Dhabi tournament. He, he was he had the only horse left in the race. Uh, he made it through the third loop. By the time the fourth loop came around, they took him off the horse. The horse wasn't gonna be able to go on. He raced for eight hours. We started at sun up, and this was like, I don't know, maybe 10 o'clock at night, and he was racing in the desert, like a place that I've never been before or since, and I would not want to be racing a horse by myself. And he just did it because it was something that he had to prove to himself, and maybe that was just something that he lost the competition. But again, it was just, just something remarkable, and I think for us as martial arts instructors, it doesn't matter, like it's not just about winning a tournament and having your hand raised and having a medal, like having medals on your windows, it's about like providing the people around you with inspiration, whether it's like a, 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 like a race in the desert, whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's uh, 
you know, pretty much anything, like, like how you carry yourself as an instructor, you know? And I'll tell you guys a funny story. Uh, I don't think anyone here will be offended by that. I took my kids to watch the Kung Fu Panda. And all of a sudden, they make a panda a superhero. I grew up to Batman and Superman. So I cannot let my kids walk out, of the, walk out of this movie thinking that a panda that sneaks out in the middle of the night to eat noodles is a superhero in any form. So I walk out of this, I, I, walk, out of, I walk out of this thing and I'm talking to my kids like, you cannot allow them, the, the panda was not strong. Did you see how the other one was super fast? Did you see how the other one was not afraid? And, and da, 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 da. But I guess what I'm trying to talk about is I was so disappointed they made the panda the superhero. And the other guy who was super fast, and there was the, it was a girl, I guess, the tiger, who was super focused. And that wasn't the superhero. It just went against everything that I was ever taught as a martial arts, you know, like the behavior of a martial arts. But I guess it's cool. You know, like anyone could be a hero. I guess that was the, that was the, the, the story they wanted to tell. But I feel as martial arts, you know, like, since the, begin since the time of the samurai, you know, like the martial art instructor sat right next to the emperor. And, like we've always had, and we always will have, like a high place in society because of what we know. Not because, of, not because the, uh, we could hurt people, but because then we could teach people to not be afraid. Like we could teach people some of the benefits we were talking about, how to focus, how to, how to be better. And that's what I love about martial arts. I love what martial arts does for me. Like I love the person that I am when I'm training hard. And I don't really like much the person that I am when I'm not training hard. Nick, you're pretty miserable right now. <laughs> well, Nick fights in the UFC. He had his uh, Achilles tendon torn off. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Like when you have all that energy inside of you that you want to compete and you want to get out there. And, um, and all of you guys who are more short have been through that one point in time. You wanted to be on the mat and you wanted to be training, but you just couldn't. You know, you just have to do something with the energy. And I believe it's the uh, responsibility of some of us more short to do it, all right? Now, where do we get started? You know, I've, I've been telling you guys about you know, being inspirational and, and, and walking a high road and understanding the responsibility of being a, a, a martial artist. Is that guy uh, throwing the kick? Because you guys can see it back there? Anybody? There's, there's uh, Frankie Edgar. Uh, he's the UFC lightweight champion. He's one of, one of the students at the school. That's a sporting session uh, last year, right, Pete? Are you willing to do what it takes? And I don't even want to tell Frankie's story. Like, I'll let you guys go in the UFC and watch, uh, uh, watch the story. I want to tell the story of these two guys right here. That guy right there, and that guy right there. That one on the white shirt, it's actually Coach Pete McHugh. He teaches the kids' classes at my academy, all right? And amateur guy, how many fights so far, Pete? Three fights, three victories. You know, like, I know all you guys are phenomenal instructors, but the best kids' jiu-jitsu instructor I've ever seen is this guy right here. Please give him a hand. <laughs> now, Matt, uh, world champion at 18 years old, Jiu-Jitsu world champion at 18 years old. How many fights does Matt have now? Five? Five. Five uh, amateur matches. He had the title for uh, two different weight classes at the local amateur event. And I'm not like telling you guys uh, to impress you with this, but to impress upon you, like here's a kid, a kid, 18 year old kid, getting kicked as hard as, does that look like Frankie's taking it easy on him? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, know, or does it look like he's just putting everything he has on it? But here's a kid who's 18 years old, that I, maybe he wants to be a fighter, maybe not, but he's at the academy and everyone kind of does it. He's probably one of the most talented kids I've ever seen, all right? But when you surround yourself with great people, like, you're gonna be good too. And I think that's a big part of today. You know, like, it's surrounding yourself with people with the same goals. Like, we're not just, you know, being in here and networking and finding out what are some of the other uh, problems and finding out where, pe where people came from. That's, I asked a couple of the guys from Ithaca, I talked to uh, Master Ace from Ramirez in the back. I always wanna know, like, how'd you guys get started? Like, how long have you had your school? Because I'm, I'm looking for experience. I'm in the same struggle as you guys. But if I had to have an advice, like, everyone wants to be that. But probably if you looked at Frankie when he was 18 years old, he was like that, and like that, all right? I guess you're getting a left cross in the face there, Pete, maybe? <laughs> so you have to surround yourself with people that are better than you, that have been doing this the long, uh, longer, and you have that opportunity here. You know, I don't think there, any of us have a doubt of how much more John and Sensei Nick know than all of us about like the whole organization of it. It's just a matter of taking the next step, and, and if it's not these guys, like they said, 
It's going to be somebody else, but you're going to have to find someone that you listen to. Just like your martial arts training, you have to find a teacher. Like a student without a teacher is not a student. So you need to find someone who's going to guide you, someone that you're going to trust. Your development in this, otherwise the guy, you know, the guy across the street will. And th that's just the nature of competition. Uh, and then I want you guys to ask yourselves, like, why do you do this? Like, why do we teach martial arts? You know, I think that uh, John, with those sales skills, you could probably be, be doing something more lucrative, don't you think? You guys have any doubts that, you know, I, I don't know if you'd be getting paid more. You know, you got a pretty nice suit. <laughs> but, you know, it's not only, there is nothing wrong with making money. Like, there is nothing wrong with getting paid for providing enormous value to our students. Nothing wrong with that. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm, my school is not known for the being the cheapest school in town. That's for sure. We have the reputation of being more expensive than, than anybody else. But with that comes a service that I believe nobody else in my area could provide. You know, and I, I believe that that's kind of how we want to separate ourselves. And, you know, I'm sure John has an enormous love for more shorts. And that's how we have to be, too. You know, like, for all of us, like, ask yourself, like, why do I do this? I'll tell you why I do this. I love the person that I am when I'm training hard. I love all the benefits that I get from martial arts. And I want as many people in this room as possible, or as many people in the world as possible to get those same benefits too. I want my guys, you know, Professor Bonjour, how did you open your school? Yeah, what well, happened, Professor Bonjour used to be my, the main instructor at my school, and he's probably one of the best instructors that we've had at the academy, and I had to fire him so that he opened his school. <laughs> the, basically, the conversation was, Bonjour, he had, a, he had a second job, he was working for PSCNG, he's a phenomenal instructor, I want him to open a school so he'll be closer to home. Still continue his training, but not be at my academy five days a week on top of his PSCNG job. So I told him, listen man, like you're gonna kill yourself, you're gonna work yourself to death, you know? Nowadays he has a, a successful school, uh, like 20 minutes away from here, and I'm so proud of him for taking that step, for taking that leap, but had I not come to him and have an honest conversation and firing him, you know, like that would have never happened, you know? And I'm going to do the same thing to Pete, and I'm going to keep doing the same thing to my guys, because I, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. <laughs> you know your day is coming, Pete. <laughs> but that's, that's really how I am. You know, like, when the guys come to me, like, I know that one day they're going to be black belts, and they deserve better than to be under my umbrella. You know, like, if they want to be, I'll, I'll rather have, you know, for sure I want them to be there. Like, that's not the, the case at all. Like, Professor Mojono, you train with us, what, two days a week still? Right? We trained, like, we trained last Saturday, right? We grappled a little bit with the gi, and that's the type of relationship that I want to have with my people. Like, I want to be able to help them achieve who they want to be, and we have that mindset for every one of our students. Of course, not all of them is going to be that type of personal relationship. I think that we're going to go far, all right? And again, if you have a strong motive, you know, given a big enough why, people can bear almost any how. When John started asking questions during his presentation, I almost felt like I couldn't, I couldn't even understand what he was saying. Like, my mind was almost somewhere else. Like, I hate being, being in a situation that I just don't know anything of what's being told in front of me. Like, if I had it my way, I'd, have my, I'd be here with my gi on, all right, my black belt, and I'm going to teach classes, and I'm going to get people motivated, and I'm going to get people loving the arm lock and the choke, and, and, like, that's what I do best. But that's why it's so important for us to surround ourselves with people that, that, that love martial arts just as much. Yeah, I'm not going to surround myself with like, people that sell cars. I'm going to surround myself with people that love martial arts. Uh, John, you train martial arts, correct? You're black belt? There you go, I have no doubt. And I, today is the first day I met John. So it's really about creating that team and, and, and uh, taking things to the next step. All you, guys, all you guys, I could see in everybody's eyes, and I'm really going more, more than life. Everyone was overwhelmed, especially with the sales presentation. You know, just how far off all of us are. Mass race. Sensei Nick tells you that you're like one of the sharpest tools in the box. Did you feel overwhelmed with that sales presentation? There you go. Maybe he knows a lot more than I do, but uh, the deal is like, yeah, there's always, there's always more uh, to, to learn. Uh, Sensei Nick had that, had that earlier on his presentation. People don't care how, uh, how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, this will be a straight line from the shoulder to the arm, all right? That's me at the, that same 2001 event that after we went, uh, Master Hands went racing in the desert. That's me, uh, one of the open matches. This guy's a wrestling world champion. He trains Rashad Evans now. 
And I could be talking to you guys about, you know, all the things that we did on the mats, or what all my students have done on the mats. Like, that's not what today is about. Like, people don't care about this. Like, they don't. Like, they're like, all right, I show up to this school. This guy has been in the UFC. He's trained a bunch of champions. But ultimately, it's like, what can he do for me? Like, I don't care that he could unlock people. I don't care that Frankie could get knocked down seven times and keep getting up. Because I know I can't. And I can't. I don't think I could have been able to get up from any one of those times that all you guys think Frankie Edgar get up. And frankly, I don't think most people would. 99% of people out there wouldn't. Nick, you think you have gotten out of that one? <laughs> that was a rough one to get out of. You know, like people only care about what we could do for them. You know, like for someone that comes into your school with the goal of losing weight, like that's, that's the focus. You know, that's, that's really what it's about. And all the content and all the conversations that we have with the students have to be guided towards that. Like you can't, I'm not saying that you guys do that, but especially now with this whole MMA thing, like everyone is all about, you know, competitors and championships and, 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 and tough guys and the ultimate fighter. Like I don't even watch the ultimate fighter. Dana, I hope you don't see this. I love, you know, I've, I've known Dana since, the, you know, since they bought the UFC, but I don't even watch the ultimate fighter. You know, I, lo I love watching the fights, but to me that's just like, you know, it's, it's for the regular spectator. Some of us who are hardcore fans love it too, but like, that's not what I'm about. Like, I'm about being on the mats, teaching people, helping them out on a, on a personal level, on a personal basis. So if you still have that mentality that filling your windows with, with trophies and medals and things like that, which is not your case, but uh, just by you guys being here, it's not going to take you very far. You know, it's, it, it's time to listen. It's time to really take things to a, a whole different level. So I don't know if you guys know this, but this is an aerial shot of uh, Manhattan. In 2010, right after I got choked out by Matt Hughes, four days later, 28 miles, it says 26, but the course ends up being 28 miles. We start right here, no, I'll use this, sorry John, getting better at it. We start at Pier, uh, Pier 40, I think, all the way up the river, all the way down, this, this area right here is called Hell's Gate. Um, even boats have trouble going through this, depending on the tide. All the way down to Pier 17, we d I did that paddling on a surfboard, so it's called paddle boarding. You stand on the board and you paddle. It took me only seven hours to finish. But uh, this was four days after fighting uh, Hughes, you know. Got my butt kicked. I'm mad as hell. I don't want to show my face anywhere. I want to hide somewhere. But you grow from those experiences, you know. Like, I was in the best shape of my life. Came up short. That's it. The next time, don't make a mistake. Uh, it was a fundraiser for autism. My son was diagnosed with autism in 2008, and the, the whole event raised over $300,000. This was 2010. 2011, we raised over $400,000. My brother came all the way out from California. We did it together, you know? So I think that's the kind of stuff that we should do, us martial arts, like getting involved. Maybe it's something personal to me, the autism, because my son was diagnosed. But I'm sure some of you guys that might have some type of illness or, or, or disease in your family, like, Everyone know, like everyone would be intimidated to be in the room with most of you, whether you guys are aware of it or not. But we need to show the world that we're not just pretty good at hurting people, that we are very good at helping people out. And if you could establish that in your community, I think that's the key. And that's really what I try to do with a lot of my, uh, my content, whether it's a video or, or a blog post, that we are accessible, you know, like that we could help people out. Somebody gets out of line, like, I know exactly what I need to do. Like, just as, not, just as quickly as I'll shake someone's hand, like, I'll unlock them too. You know, like, if that's what's needed. Like, I got no problem with that. But, uh, like, it's, it's not what it's about. You know, like, we're, we're about helping people. So that was, uh, that's probably one of my favorite shots. Because, like, right here, you guys see me on my knees the, la the whole last hour of the race, I couldn't stand anymore. That's, uh, that's like the Brooklyn Bridge right there. Could see me just how small we are. It's like a pretty, pretty good view of the city. Like the, the twin towers used to be back there, so you know it was, it was pretty emotional. And my son was at the finish line, my daughter too. You know, like I, I think that's the kind of stuff that you have always think to think outside the line. Like it's not just about all right, all my students won these tournaments. Like people are gonna be drawn if you could do things, do things that reach the realm of your own martial arts. Things that allow you to portray martial arts as a whole in a positive way. Again, just the whole concept of being remarkable, doing things that are not worth talking about, whether it's 
yourself, your students, helping people out. All right. I want to read this note. I, I, I did this as a, as a Facebook note, all right? but I also did it as a blog. That's something else that I do. I just recycle a lot of the content. But I want to read it. I want to read the parts that are uh, relevant to these guys who are here because I, I like to use my students as, um, as a proof that I'm a half decent teacher. I really like to brag about the stuff that I do. All right? So, remarkable. Uh, dictionary. Notably or conspicuously unusual. Extraordinary. Uh, remarkable. Worthy of notice, attention. It is remarkable too. All right? And I start talking about my students. It is remarkable to become a world champion at 18 years old. That's a kid just coming out of high school. Who travels all the way to California and wins the world championship. Uh, it is remarkable to go through chemotherapy for throat cancer and not miss a single day of training. I had a student of mine who had uh, throat cancer and all through chemo he didn't miss a single class. He would come to my school and lay on the mat, yellow. He had that little patch that you inject the chemotherapy on for anyone who's had family through it. Uh, I just didn't have a, I, I thought he was gonna die on the mat and I just made peace that if I had to go to jail because that guy died on the mat, I was not gonna have a heart to tell him that he couldn't come because I knew that that was gonna kill him anyway. So like, you know what, this guy might as well just die on my mat because I'm not gonna tell him not to come anymore. Um, to clean 300 pounds with a broken hand and a cast. That's you, Nick. Nick is a beast for you guys that haven't seen him fight. Get knocked down seven times in one round and still defend the world title. That's Frankie. Most of you guys don't know this. To not use escalators. I think that's pretty remarkable. Frankie does not, use, does not get on escalators or when you're on airport, like the, the walking thing, he won't use that. He thinks, he thinks that his legs, his legs are too strong. He won't accept that. When people tell you that Frankie was born with a strong chin, or I tell you that he works very hard on it every day. Um, to quit school to dedicate full time to martial arts training, that's the same kid who was uh, uh, the 18-year-old uh, uh, beast, all right? To be a black belt in multiple martial arts, including BJJ, that's Professor Bonjona. He came to train with me, he was a black belt in uh, Taekwondo. And uh, where's uh, Jose who talked to earlier, to the leaders? Right here. He was a black belt and he came to train me. It's always, it's always inspired me, guys who come to the academy as black belts and other martial arts and still willing to learn something new. Again, that's, that's a little bit of what we're doing here today. Uh, I have this guy who has five children and still trains, I don't know how. Like, I, I barely, I barely <laughs> his name is Jeff Bregman. Uh, he's a brown belt in my school and, and I think these things are remarkable and people get a good kick out of it, all right? Uh, Where's the next one? Where's you, Pete? All right, so, so Coach Pete, for you guys that don't know, he lived two and a half hours away up in Nyack, New York. He moved down to train with us. He's a, he was a white belt. He had just gotten out of college. Now he's a brown belt. So you have to know what you're willing to go through. You know, like he lived uh, a couple places, had a couple crazy roommates that he didn't like, you know, uh, had, you know, crazy injuries that, or like career threatening injuries, and he's just coming back from them, you know, like I'm. I'm so proud of this guy, and, and this is the stuff that I like to use in my content. Rather than, you know, the, there's always space for the, you know, five tips for this, six tricks for that. Like, I think that's important, but I think people really connect with the, the, the tough stories, people that overcome barriers. What's next? Well, let's start talking about the content, guys. I really wanted to just uh, make a point of the whole remarkable thing, and that's what I really try to do. The first thing is, to drive, all right? If you don't have like a thousand people on your fan page, all right? If you don't have like, like a couple thousand people on your personal Facebook page, like who are you gonna be uh, posting to? You know, like you don't have to have that many, but you know, if you have like a hundred people on, on your uh, uh, school's page and then you have like 300 Facebook friends, like it's really not gonna matter how, many, uh, how nice your videos are. Like you're gonna have to work hard and that's really what's gonna bring your reputation as as a sensei Nick was saying, as a publishing company. You know, like it's, I didn't, of course, yeah, Ricardo, but you were in the UFC, yeah, that helped. I'm not gonna deny that, all right? And I've, I've people know me from, you know, having like a more public life than most of you guys have had. But ultimately, I believe is like having something to say. You know, it's having like cool things to say and it's respecting people and carrying yourself in a positive way. I think that's what we are at Martial Arts. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is drive people your media outlets, and I'm gonna tell you guys how I do that uh, at the school. Then create content, distribute the content, and then engage. 
All right, so it's uh, pretty similar to what uh, uh, John talked to you guys about in the sale process. It's just creating the people who are going to listen to it, all right? Creating the content, distributing it, getting it out, getting it everywhere, and then engaging, and then just the proper way to engage. And there's definitely some rules like everything else that, you know, the less we break, the better. How do we do at the school to drive the students uh, to Lee Outlands, to make it a part of the school's culture? Like, someone walks through the door, like, I'm already talking about, like, our Facebook page or, or videos and things like that. I believe that's something important. Every class, we do, like, weekly videos almost. So if we're doing weekly videos, guys, the video for this week, we worked on, you know, this takedown or this punch. Next week, we're going to work on this and that. If we just create the habit for the students to go in and check it out. And I've had people who never had Facebook accounts to join Facebook to just so they could access the videos, right? And be more in tune with the conversation with everything that's happening at the school. Another option, many of you might not have Facebook. I didn't have it, and, I, and frankly, I didn't want to have it because I didn't want to, you know, I want to, when I'm at home, like, I want to have private time. But, like, sometimes I feel like when we are at the academy, we almost get overwhelmed. Like, I walk into my school and I can't do anything. That's why I love teaching, because if I'm not teaching, there's someone trying to talk to me. Hey, Ricardo, how about this? Are we going to train tomorrow? How about that? Uh, Someone is always wanting something from us at the academy, and that's part of being the head instructor, that's part of being the instructor. But, uh, you know, just drive people to the lounge, all right, the, the, the lounge for the social site, if you guys are uh, Champions Way uh, clients. If not, then YouTube, you know, like the same video that you post as a Facebook video, you could post it on YouTube and it just helps things out. Uh, first way to drive students, class announcements. Like, Every student's eyes and ears are on the instructor right there, which was actually good. There's some guys got new belts there. Like, take opportunity of the lineup, you know, to, 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 to drive important messages. Uh, I really feel that at the end of a class, at the end of a proper martial arts class, someone's sweating, they need air, they need water. What better time to say something for them to really absorb it? You know, like, so try not to be long, don't take advantage of people's uh, uh, being open for influence, but I really love the end of class to tell people that I want them to remember. I believe uh, Sensei Nick told me that these will be in the library. This is a contact sheet that every time someone enrolls at the academy at the, at the enrollment conference with their agreement in a folder, I had a contact sheet with the school's phone. Oh, I already know the phone. Yeah, you already know the arm lock too, but you missed it, right? So here's the phone. Here's the website, email, Facebook page, our news page, our blog, Twitter, our SMS updates. All right, we do send SMS. I think we have like around 140 people now since they were catching up to you. Um, and the students love it. You know, I send from uh, videos through announcements with the school. I put the blog through Bitly and I send it to them. If I see a cool article talking about the benefits of martial art, I put it in there. Always stuff that I think is relevant to the parents. We did this uh, choker treat, or oh, Sensei Nick uh, had someone create this choker treat pass, all right? And it's basically a landing page on Perfect Mind. I just put that through Bitly. It's a URL shrink shrinker and makes the link very small. I send that through Twitter, and in less than 24 hours, we had like 10, 10 reads. I don't know about, I don't know for you guys if that's a lot, but to me, that's quite a lot for something so simple to do. You know, and a couple of the guys are training on the mats right now. And then there's the, the QR code. The QR code takes you to, I believe it takes you to the SMS or either, either the SMS or a Facebook page. Uh, any stationery, anything you have at the school. Uh, John Mallet was telling you guys about having that on your business card. There's the, the QR code there, the SMS, how to, how to opt in for it. All the way here on the bottom, there's the phone number, the website, and I believe it's the Facebook page. You guys can't really see it, all right? So any opportunity, anytime someone's gonna pay attention to something, I'm driving them to our media outlets so that when I have something important to say, people are actually gonna be listening. Otherwise, it's like a, like, a, like, a, like a dog barking at the moon. I have these posters that I put up at the school. This is one of them, you know, stay in touch. It's like martial arts, but there's like a little bit of a yoga pose there. There's like our, our kind of like our motto at the academy, all right? Facebook news, blog, mobile updates. It's probably to our Facebook page. Just try, trying to get creative and, and 
Sometimes uh, even on our Facebook page, I'll, I'll post, you know, sign up for an SMS update. And just, it's, you, you, it's got to be done. You know, like you, gotta, you have to get to people one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, man, did you, get, did you get the update that we're not going to have class tomorrow? You got it? You sure? All right, cool. Did you get the update that we're not going to have class? You did, you did get it? Did somebody not get it? <laughs> I didn't get the update. You didn't get it? All right. Get your cell phone out, please. All right, now you're going to text RABJJ to 64842. So next time when you come to the school in the middle of the snow, you make sure that at least you're going to be open, okay? <laughs> and I'll say that so that everybody can hear it, all right? And like as, as I feel a lot of times when someone is a student of the martial arts, they have, if I'm going to get someone from white to black belt, then I'm, if I'm going to take someone as an 18-year-old kid and make him a world champion, or if I'm going to take a kid who gets bullied and I'm going to give this kid confidence, they're going to need to learn how to listen. So if I want them to really listen, I'll look them in the eye, and I'll be like, did you get the update? No? <laughs> get your cell phone out, all right? That's a little bit of the, 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 the ability that we have as martial arts instructors to really often tell people what to do in their best interest. You know, I'm gonna tell someone, to, like, get your cell phone out, like, give me your cell phone number. You know, like, I'm gonna ask a little kid something like that, that's inappropriate. Next, the types of content. We're going to talk about just content rules, just dealing with content. What are some of the things that we use at the school that I believe are effective and some no-nos and some things like that. First thing, if you, if you don't have a blog, you haven't made videos, or if you, they haven't really gotten, you need to read this book. It's called Content Rules. It's going to, you know, how to create killer blogs, podcasts, videos, e-books, webinars. This way you're not calling Sensei Nick every time you want to write something. Like, could please Champions Way write something for me? No, like Champions Way is not supposed to write your blogs, guys. I don't want nobody writing my blogs. I want our blogs to have Coach Pete writing, Professor Bonjour, like some of the guys who have like our, our footprint, like our, our uh, thumbprint, so that it sounds like us. I was telling the guys uh, out in the corridor when we talked about it, we had so many schools together that we're going to do a content creation meeting, myself and some of the other instructors, try and create stuff that's congruent for everybody. The types of content. I had this video in, but it's really not going to work because there is no audio. It's a video that I made with my cell phone. We got in the ring right before Frankie fought this last fight, and our boxing coach always has a motivational speech followed by a Bible uh, passage. He, he also uh, preaches. And it was one of the most inspirational moments I've had in my life. You know, like I had like goosebumps just thinking about it. You guys should check the video online. I posted it. And, you know, it, he, he, he reads a, a famous uh, uh, passage of the Bible. Like I wasn't brought up very religious, but like there are certain, certain uh, passages of a lot of these books that are pretty inspirational. So don't, don't, don't be afraid to check them out. The main content that I like to focus on, YouTube's huge, like any type of video, people love it. Like people love pretty much any video you do. You know, if you are a good instructor and you really understand like communication skills and, and, and you could speak properly, I, I, I could barely speak English. You know what I mean? Like English is my second language. But if you, if you demonstrate in a good way and, and you have some, some thought behind it, people love it because they have the chance to be in your school without really being there. And almost like it gives my students like little like little soldiers all right that they could refer the school to all of a sudden they tell their parents like i want to see you want to see they call it my professor they want to see you want to see my professor teaching class all right then it's me and one of them me and uh, p or me and professor bongiorno just demonstrating a technique or it could be something with the kids program and and then from there it goes like it always stays there i don't know this video is not going to have any uh This video does not allow embedded playback. So basically, we did another fundraising event. One of my, one of my students has a school in, uh, on the Jersey Shore. There was this little girl with cancer. So I'll just go to the next one. It's also not going to play. Sorry? No, that's OK. You guys could just uh, go to our YouTube channel. You'll be able to see all these videos, and you get an idea of what I'm talking about. But my student, who has a school in, uh, on the Jersey Shore, there was a girl in town, the girl wasn't even his student, that was, uh, had cancer and she didn't have money to pay the bills. 
So he asked me, he asked uh, Nickerson, who fights in the UFC, Frank Edgar, who fights in the UFC, Professor Bonjour, he asked us to do a benefit seminar. So we all went there, we taught a big class. I think he, each of the students paid like 50 bucks or something like that. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's something that we could all afford to help a little girl with cancer. I think in the end we raised like $6,000 for, for the little girl. So whenever something like that happens, like whenever you're going out of your way to, to, to do something for someone, make sure you record it. You know, like I think that's, it's not bragging. Like the girl, the little girl got the $6,000, right? The best thing about the video that we did, actually, uh, my, my daughter came with me, she did the whole video, she's great with, she's great with the camera. If you don't have someone that's really good with the camera, generally the, the girls are a little bit better than us guys. Because they pay attention to detail. Like I'll write a blog post and there will be like a million, uh, a million things wrong in there. You know, like the content is probably pretty good, but like all the commas and dots and like uh, none of it's where it's supposed to be the name. Like I'll misspell everything, it's, it's just too much for me. So get, get, get a girl to, do, to, to help you out. But it's not bragging if you did something good, it's just letting people know. It's again, it's, it, it's about uh, the media, being a media company. The best thing about that is the little girl's mom went in our YouTube, right on the YouTube uh, page of that video and thanked us. She was like, you, you guys are angels. Thank you very much for helping my daughter. You know, like, like you can't pay for that. And you shouldn't, like, because it's not something that, there's no exchanging money, there's only exchanging value, there's only exchanging love, and, and it was a really good thing that like, all our guys, you know, all these guys were there with me. Target audience, know who you're making the videos for. Like, I got this, I'm not sure if it was in this book, it might have been another one, all right? With, like, with our target audience, one day we had a meeting with the staff and we, we just nicknamed everybody, all right, based on, based on, on the benefits to the students. So we have Big Billy for the overweight kid who comes in and the mom is like worried that the kid's like, now it's not overweight, now it's childhood obesity. Like you're gonna have these like obese kids who walk into your school and they need help. So you need to have content for that. So I just did the kids one, we have a whole profile for adults. We have Timid Tim for the compliment, all right? So someone walks through the door, oh, my son, you know, my son is uh, having problems at school, he's not too confident, you know, like we know how to deal with that. There's like a whole uh, content creation based on that. The more you could separate things, the more organized you can get with that, the, the, more, uh, uh, the more effective you are going to be. Like active hour, athletic hours, like that kid who shows up in your class and he could right away do like a crazy kick or like a crazy takedown, he's all over the place. You know, this kid doesn't really need confidence, he needs self-control, right? Like we all know, we all had that, we all have one of those kids. So, uh, there are a handful, like all the kids are a handful, but there needs to be, like you need to know, and your staff needs to know, like how does, how does jujitsu help a kid develop self-control? Coach P, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like all of us in the academy or in the school should know how to talk about it, what Sensei Nick talked about, you know, you splash somebody with water, like what are the benefits of Jiu-Jitsu? Daydream Danny, all right? Learning disability. My son was diagnosed with autism. I never thought that he was gonna do Jiu-Jitsu. That was one of the biggest frustrations that I had. Like, he's about to be a gray belt, which is the first solid belt in Jiu-Jitsu. You know, and, and I thank it all to Coach Pete. Like, that's why I think he's the best, you know, kid Jiu-Jitsu instructor there's ever been. Uh, I never thought my son would be able to train, but he does, and, and, and he loves it. He does real well with the structure of class. For you guys that have someone, uh, know, know someone who has a kid in the spectrum, you know, like you hear about martial arts, great for kids with attention deficit disorder, and this and that, and then all of a sudden one of those kids show up, and you're like, man, I can't believe, like, why is that kid here? You know, like, how come, how come the school around the block gets all the wrestlers, and I get, you know, this kid? <laughs> shouldn't be surprised, like it's out there, it's out there, the martial arts, like the structure of a martial arts class, like my son could recite every word that Coach Pete says through class, like he goes home and he makes some whole mock class in the video, because the warm up is always the same, then we practice techniques, he doesn't do so well at that, and then we have the cool down, the, the exercises and the stretches, and again he excels at that, and he might never be a world champion, but he is certainly getting a lot of benefits from training. He's always had a uh, uh, very weak upper body. He, couldn't, he could barely do a push-up when he started training. He could bang out push-ups now. 
You know, like he was always very scared of, of the touch. Some of the kids in the spectrum have very deep sensory issues. He doesn't have that anymore. He couldn't hug me. My son was four years old and he couldn't hug me. Now he could squeeze the air out of my lungs, you know, from the training he's gotten. So if that's not, that's like, I haven't even wrote, uh, written a blog about that because like, I don't want to make it sound like, uh, like I'm making it up. You know what I mean? But soon, maybe Coach Pete will write a blog for me so that it doesn't sound like, a, like, a, like I'm trying to fool people on it, you know? And I'm sure you really, really pay attention. Your schools are filled with stories like that. You just have to like get pretty good at paying attention to them. You know, like, like the world is filled with stories. Like I love hearing stories. I'm not the greatest storyteller. Like I've gotten better at it. But if you just pay attention, like you're gonna get so, I have a, a folder in, in my iPad and in my, in my computer that it's all uh, blog content or content. Like anything I see that maybe one day I wanna do a video on, or maybe one day I want to write something on, or I want to do a Facebook post on. It's a quote that I like. It goes on that. It goes on that little folder. And then every once in a while, I look at it. And it's going to be like, you don't have to make up everything. You know, maybe you see a quote that you like. Don't just post the quote. Maybe write a paragraph about it. And from there, you take it forward. Like, add your own twist to it. Like, add your own, your own uh, uh, thumbprint to it. The no-nos. Nobody wants to hear that one. But they're pretty obvious, like if you guys don't know this, like you've probably been hiding in a, in a hole somewhere. Like religion, race, and gender, like it's, like it's not cool for guys to like say bad things about girls. And, and not the other way around, but most of the instructors are uh, uh, guys. Like it's, like it's just not gonna fly for your students to see you like saying funny stuff about, you know, like how women are, you know, PMS, you know, whatever it is they're talking about. Like that's crazy, like you should not, as an instructor, like, I don't want my instructors to see me eat. I don't want them to know what I eat. Although I, I do Brazilian barbecue for them all the time. Like, I don't want them to see me at my worst. Like, I'm at my best on the mat. Don't use Facebook and YouTube as an opportunity for you to show yourself at your worst. Because you're only going to be damaging yourself. It's not funny. Like, like these ridiculous jokes and like all these, th these things that people post on Facebook about somebody. In, like, it's... If you think it's funny, somebody else thinks it's not, and they might take it offensive. Like most of these things are just like big no-nos, like especially with the Facebook posts. Again, like you are to all your students a superhero. Like don't talk them out of it. You know, like if anything, try to live up to it. If anything, like you're not really a superhero. I'm not, but I try as much as I possibly can to to take care of my health take care of my body, take care of my mind, and reading books and educating myself and be surrounding myself with wonderful people. Like, don't, 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 don't take that away from your students. You know, like, that's something that, it's not that they pay for, it's the time they invest in listening to you. Like, don't take it away from them by, by posting, like, stupid stuff. No country music. <laughs> I actually like country music. But <laughs> But really, like a lot of a lot of the lyrics are, oh, my dog died, oh, my girlfriend left me, oh, it's Monday, <laughs> oh, it's 9 a.m. I can't believe I'm waking up at nine. Like that's ridiculous stuff to post. Like it's only gonna make you look bad. Like it might sound funny at the moment, but unless it's something that's gonna educate your students and the people around you in a positive way, you just shouldn't put it out there at all. You know, like, if you think that, oh, but it's my personal profile, it's not the school's profile, like, that time has come and gone. Like, if you don't think that more and more you have to align yourself with the person you're supposed to be in this day and age, like, you're wrong. You know, like, people could just Google you. If you Google my name right now, all right, probably on the first page, it's going to be choked out by Matt Hughes, knocked out by this guy. Like, maybe you're going to see my school. Maybe you're going to see something positive, but a lot of the, I shouldn't say negative, like I'm, it's not something that's negative, but like people can find out real quick who you are online. Like, so if you're not the superhero, like work a little harder at it, but while you're working at it, like don't, don't like take the cape off and show Clark Kent to them because it's not going to be good. Now Apple's trade, how many of you guys have the iPhone and, or the iPad? 
A lot of people do, how many of you guys have watched uh, Keynote when Steve Jobs was still alive? You guys have even watched like a clip of it? Yeah, like the Keynote, like the iPhone Keynote, like before a new, a new iPhone came out, they always had like a Keynote presentation. Oh, this is the new iPhone, this is the new iPad, it's coming out, these are the features, these are this, these are that, all right? If you didn't see it, maybe you don't watch the news that often, but it was on every major news every time one of them came out, be it CNN, NBC, ABC, BBC in England, all right? It was in Brazil too, because I followed some of the Brazilian news stations. Every time a new, whether it's a new iPad or a new iPhone came out, they did that big, you know, kind of how we're doing here today, you know? Steve Jobs was great at, you know, for sure leading his company, but he was also a great communicator and a great speaker. And that is a little bit of, of their whole strategy, and that's really what I try to do with my, with my tools. Like, I've been an Apple user for, I want to say like 15 years now, so I like to call myself like an early adopter for you guys that are familiar with the, the, like the whole graph of how innovation spreads. Uh, so the beginning of everything I do is, and Sensei Nick talked about it a couple, um, a couple webinars ago that we have three types of students, like the students who are crazy about us, the ones that are like a little bit indifferent, and the ones who are ready to quit. A lot of the content that I put out, like it's not like, hey, you who's, who's about ready to quit, uh, please don't quit, right? We love you at the school, that's not what I do. Like I put out content for those guys who are crazy about the academy, so they talk even more about the academy. All right, all you guys have those, those students that come to the academy five days a week, like they like any Facebook post you post up, like that's the people that, the major not the majority, but I'll say like my really big time good posts are about, or videos or anything like that, because they're gonna be the ones that are gonna share it and, and, and post it somewhere else and post it on the jujitsu forum or, or, or and really spread, those are your messengers, like those are the people that are gonna spread the news more than the person who's ready to quit. I feel that the person who's ready to quit, the work is done. Hey man, how are you? I heard from uh, the program director that you're having some issues coming to the academy. Let's sit down, let's talk about it. Like, I care if one of my people, one of my students quits. I still do. Not because I fought in the UFC, that, or, or you know, the, the, the arm lock that I did, like, that doesn't make me above my students at all. And it never will. This last Thursday, what was the kid's name, Pete, who was ready to quit? Christopher? Christian. Kid Christian came to the academy and he's ready, to, he's ready to quit. He's like, oh, I don't have time to train anymore. I got a new job. I taught a basic class, it might have been three months ago, and I felt the kid was pretty talented. Not that I felt that he could be a champion, it's just that his body moved naturally. That, like he was, I could tell he was heavy at the time and he had good natural ability for jiu-jitsu. He left the school. I had uh, the guy in the office call him, like, is that his cell phone number? Call him right now, I want to talk to him. Get him back to the school. He came back to the school. I sat him down. Hey man, what's going on? Why, why, why you don't have time to train anymore? Oh, I don't know. I just feel like I'm not as motivated as before. I'm like, how about this? How about you come Wednesday, uh, Tuesday? How about Tuesday you come before your class? And while everyone's warming up, we're gonna work out together. All right, I'm gonna roll with you. I'm gonna tell you how, you know, some of the things that you're doing wrong and I'm gonna send you. Because I know, especially in Jiu Jitsu, there's always a performance expectation. I know that generally, and uh, you guys can confirm with me in the other martial arts that most of the problems in a, in a school begin on the mat. Begin by some type of, some type of maybe the instructor called the student by a wrong name, maybe someone hurt the student, maybe, you know, was there a guy who's a little bit of a bully? Like bullying happens inside our schools too, it's not just the little kids. You know, like people, some, some people have bullying personalities. You know? So I called this kid and I'm teaching him like a, 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 like a makeup private you know, I'll probably, I'm probably gonna roll with the kid for an hour because he's pretty talented, he's a pretty good kid. But I don't have a problem doing with that. And let me tell you why. I've had, I think I've graduated more jujitsu black belts than probably anyone you've, you've heard of in this region. Like I have 20 something black belts. You know, people that have been with me for a year. How many times, how long have you been training with me, Professor? Yeah, Professor's been training with me for 13 years. You know, and that's how long I've been a black belt uh, in Brazilian jujitsu. And I've had some of my black belts quit the very next day, I gave him the black belt because they couldn't live up to it. Never came back, never taught it. I had some of my black belts quit to go do judo. Next thing I know, the guy's doing a judo tournament as a white belt, like beating up on little teenagers. Like, it's ridiculous, but people will do that, you know? Like, and that guy, I didn't call him back. 
I just let him know that I thought he was a coward. And I hope that he'd never come back. The guy's like a tough dude, a tough cop, who could probably like arrest any of us in here. He's a pretty tough dude, but on the mat, people's character and weaknesses get revealed. And our job as instructors is to help them through it. You know, like if the little kid leaves, I know his life is not gonna get better. I never see someone quit martial arts and six months later they show up ripped, confident, you know, like with a better job. Like my life only went up after I left this school. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> you guys are laughing, but it, you guys are laughing, but it does not happen. That's how much I believe in martial arts, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm gonna, my, my goal is to train jujitsu the day I die. You know, it's it's because it makes me a better person. And every time a student leaves, I feel like not that I got fired, but I feel like that per like that person is not gonna be okay. Like I honestly feel that like that feeling like you're never gonna see somebody again and they're not gonna be okay. So I try to work pretty hard at it. You know, like whether it's coming up with something like a video that will help them out and motivate them or not. All right. So again, while in the fence, and then features for the rest of us. You guys have the new, anybody has the new iPhone with the Siri girl that you could ask anything? Mine doesn't have that, and I, I don't think I'll be able to work with something like that. I just, there's some, some certain things that are too technologically advanced for me. I'm usually pretty good at learning stuff, but uh, so Apple always did a good job of making things simple. And then the last thing is like, could you imagine if you could just post a video, if you could just hold a press conference and it would be on CNN and ABC and, and every major news outlet in the entire world? You can, it's called YouTube but you're gonna have to work hard to build your reach. You're gonna have to work hard to come up with good content. And sometimes what I do is, all right guys, today we're gonna work on, I don't know, uh, today we're gonna work on taking people down off a uh, leg kick from Muay Thai. Just making it up. All right, I want you guys to go watch Master Ace demonstrating the roundhouse kick to the leg and see how hard that kick comes. And if you don't have a good shin to block it, you might as well take that guy down, forget it. All right. I'll use other instructors' videos, like other people that I know are good instructors that I know are a little bit more in line. I don't have to come up with every little content that I post. I'm always referring other, uh, other content that I deem remarkable. So the, the, the types of content we talked about, YouTube, Facebook, blog posts, and then the kit, the target audience, the no-nos, Apple strategy, now, how do we distribute it? Are you guys familiar with Bitly? Who you, who's used Bitly before? Yeah, so most of you guys are familiar with it. So Bitly is basically a URL shrinker. You get, you know, most of you guys will have a hard time spelling Ricardo Almeida. So this is kind of made for people like me. They have like a complicated name. You just take, you know, anything, ricardoalmeida.com slash blog one, and you put it in here, and you ask it to shrink, and then it gives you all the, all the, the statistics on it. This was a video that we did, and I posted it on, on Twitter, and it had like 219 clicks, like right off the bat. Like this is, it shows, you know, what the links came from Twitter, from, this is a, another uh, shrink that it happens on Twitter, direct, US, Great Britain, Canada, like a bunch of countries in the world where it came from. But this is the important stuff to me. Like I don't really care about Twitter. A lot of that comes from the US two times. Like a lot of those people are like spent. Uh, I care more about Facebook. So 82 Facebook shares, 130 something likes, I can't really read it, 20 something, uh, 20 something comments. Is that pretty good for edge rank, Sensei? You know, like, so next time I post something, all those people that click like, they're gonna see that, rather than some other dumb post that someone's posting about, you know, that they think is funny. And to me, that's important, all right? So being able to just put it to Bitly and then shrink it and, and send it, I send these, you can send it through email. All right, Perfect Mind uh, changes where software allows you to create lists for your students. So your students who are current students, maybe someone who hasn't been to the academy for a while, you, wanna, you might wanna send them a certain thing, then you can send it to them. All the social media outlets, all right? Facebook, Twitter, I use a little bit just because of the US two times, almost too in-depth it. Uh, Google Plus. Like all, 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 all these, it's important to, to share any content you come up with. SMS, 
I like it, and I see it makes a big difference at my school. All right. Uh, I think I, I met Sensei Nick the, the day that he kind of started working with SMS, so it was right around the corner. It, it, he, introduced, uh, he introduced it to me right away, and whether it's like snow closures that we have here, um, promotions, the choke retreat passes, like it doesn't matter, like I, I just affords me the ability to send stuff directly to my students rather than send an email or post something on Facebook. I think I feel it's more direct. YouTube, and then for your students who are not on Facebook, if you use the, the social site lounge, it's pretty easy to work with. Like if you could post on Facebook, you could post on the lounge, no problem. Um, and, the, and then comes the engagement. Like after you've draw, uh, driven your students to the media outlets, you've created the content, and then they receive the content, there's gonna be some type of reaction. Like this just the way uh, the world works, you know? So how do we engage them? Uh, to me, personally, I think that, again, it was what John was telling you guys earlier, you know, the way you project yourself, it can't really be fake, but to really influence people, like, you have to really like it. Like, you can't just fake how much you love something. I mean, you can maybe a little bit, but not too much. So, you work something like this, guys. If you're passionate, you can only have inspired students. Like, you, 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 the way you influence people, they're always going to be a level below you. Otherwise, the influence is coming from somewhere else. So if you're a passionate guy or girl, you're going to have inspired students. If you're an inspired instructor, you're going to have motivated students. If you're motivated, you're going to have indifference. If you're indifferent, you're just not going to have anything. Right? So to me, like, I'm absolutely crazy about jiu-jitsu. So I think I end up with guys who are not just passionate, but absolutely crazy too. And I think that's what you guys should practice. Like, Anytime you step on the match, to me, it's just a ritual. You know, like, I bow. Like, it's like Clark Kent turns into Superman. Like, that is when I'm at my best. And I'll let, I'll let nothing, like, get in the way of that. So when you're on the match, like, that's when the work is being done. You're driving people to your Facebook. You're telling them about your YouTube uh, posts. And you are talking about the SMS uh, alerts that you send and letting them know. Like, you got all, you know, 20, 30, 40 people looking at you, so you might as well use it rather than, you know, try to send mailing out and stuff like that. It's just it's not going to work. <laughs> Following up with Facebook posts, like, it's get, just because of the number of people that we're getting, it gets harder and harder. I kind of wish Facebook was a little bit more like the Google Plus Sensei Nick that you, I would like to be like, these are my students, and these are the rest of the Facebook people, because I want to know what's going on with my students. Like, any life, uh, life changing or, or life important mentioning experience that my students have, they're gonna post about it. Hey, I just bought a new house. Like, I want to be able to know that one of my students bought a house, and when he comes in, I want to congratulate him, or maybe send like a little postcard out. Like, someone's not gonna walk into your school, put their gear on, and be like, hey, I just bought a house. Look, like, it's not gonna happen. Like, it, as soon as someone walks on the match, it's time to train. I don't know about, about you guys' school, but unless it's the very first class of the day or the last class of the night, uh, there is no downtime. Like, the classes are like just going, 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 going. You don't have time really to interact with the students. So the addition of the social media has allowed me to really use it as a student retention tool to interact and engage with my students to a much deeper level like a baby being born, um, marriage, someone went away, they disappeared for a week, now all of a sudden you're gonna be like, maybe they don't need a DNS call. Maybe when, you when they walk in, all right, hey man, how was Mexico? Did you have a good time? How was it, tell me about it. You know, that's a whole different experience than just, hey, we missed you here at the school, uh, uh, call us if you have any problems, bye. It's way better than that, it's way better than like some, some DNS script. All right, uh, future pacing. I think uh, Master Ace is gonna talk a little bit about the free framing and, and future pacing and, and cliffhanging. Again, all the students line up at the end of class, like you have the opportunity to, all right guys, this is what we worked on today, this is what we're gonna work on next time, or this is what we're gonna working on next week. Make sure you are here. You know, like just really being able to keep their interest, even, even when they're not at the academy. Because 
Whether you are on Facebook or not, or whether you have a YouTube channel or not, I can promise you, your students are on Facebook, and I can promise you they are on YouTube. So they might as well be looking at at least something you did, right? If they are gonna be on YouTube, they might as well look at a video that you posted, or they're gonna be learning from someone else. And they can, all right, they could be learning, you know, karate from maybe the school down the street, or they could be watching a video maybe from someone all the way on, on the other side of the world, and that's okay, that's the world we live in. But if you afforded the opportunity to guide your students, to see your face and hear you speak and be influenced by you, even when you're not at the academy, why aren't you gonna use that? And if you are, measure it and follow up on it. Uh, asking questions. Like, I like to tell my guys that the school doesn't have a lock on the door. The, the back door or the entrance is like a revolving door. How do we lock a revolving door? Just just stand right on it. So one of the one of the things that I've gotten used to because we have two mats. So while Coach Pete's killing it with the kids, I'm teaching the adults. But they all leave the academy at the same time. So I don't have a chance to be on both mats. Sometimes we'll, sometimes I'll jump and help them with the black belt class. So what I'll do as soon as the class is done, I'll go right to the entrance of the academy and I'll try to say goodbye to everybody. You know, call, get to know the, the the little guys, the little the little students who come to the school by name, and you know, high five them. When are you coming next? You know, like, how was class today? What did you learn today? You know, especially with the little kids, it's important that, you, that you, you teach them to engage, you know? Hey, what's up, Johnny? Come on, man, shake my hand, look me in the eye. You know, just little things like that, a parent sees you doing that, it's a big difference, you know? Like, it, they got forever see you as a positive influence in the child's life, rather than some, you know, some football coach, all right? No, nothing against football. Guys, I love football, I actually watch football a lot, but like, I've trained jiu-jitsu for 20 years and I teach jiu-jitsu. Like the guy who's uh, teaching football and coaching the kids in football, especially at that age, it's gonna be some guy who probably never played football, maybe he played as a little kid, all right? Has had no formal coaching uh, education whatsoever and calls little Jimmy by Johnny, all right? All he's interested in is who can score the touchdown, all right? Which is probably gonna be the most athletic kid. He might not even be the most athletic kid, 10 years from now. It's probably gonna be the kid who outdo the other one, who develop his motor skills a little bit quicker, and then all of a sudden the other kids are gonna sprout, all right? So that's, that's really what I try to do at my academy, you know, differentiating what a martial arts school is, all right, or what a jiu-jitsu school is from the school sports. I've written blogs about that different, that's, that's a good blog idea for you guys, like right away, right away, oh, but, you know, Johnny plays football and now I have to pay for karate or I have to pay for jiu-jitsu? Well, let's break down why football is free, all right? I'm not saying it's worthless, but it is free, you know? And then you break it down. Well, I've trained jiu-jitsu 20 years. How long has your coach been taught? You know, like everything that's done in a sporting setting, school sports, athletics, is, you know, the best kids play, which I guess is kind of how it should be. All right, and it's about the team winning, you know, and then all of a sudden the kids who develop quicker play, the kids who don't develop sit on the bench. Like, at my school, nobody sits on the bench. Everyone's, everyone's on the mats, and one is gonna be the best, and one is gonna be the worst, all right? But everyone's gonna be playing, everyone's gonna be having a good time. And uh, guys, that's pretty much what I have for you today. You know, I, there you go, you guys, you guys clap so fast. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't prepare, I didn't prepare, I didn't write down my contact information, but I am on Facebook. If you just look up, uh, I guess it's facebook.com slash R-A-B-J-J. If you guys have any questions or if, you know, if you want like any ideas or, or if you ever want to bounce stuff off of me or maybe if you did something that worked for you and you want to share the tip with me, definitely do that one. All right. So thank you guys for having me.